that music. Party's not a party's a man who fights crime And we're gonna watch him fight for a minute at a time With John and Will and I guess you just rhyme It's Bad Minutes! Hello everyone, and welcome to Bat Minutes and Robin. This is the podcast where we prepare you for a bitter harvest. That harvest being every minute of Batman and Robin, <laughs> one minute at a time. I am one of the hosts, Niall McGowan. And I am your other host, John Parker, the one who thinks that this movie is not a bitter harvest. It's been full of fun and joy. Oh, I am expecting that light to go in the corner and just to hear, surprise, <laughs> I'm your new guest. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Uh, today, though, we are again, once again, joined by a guest, uh, and that guest is coming over the wires. Is of course uh, Professor Christy Porter. Beep 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 beep. It's Christy Porter. Hey, Ooh. Professor Christy Porter. Hello. So glad to be here. Hey, Thanks hey. for having me. Sure. Oh, thanks for hopping on board, Christy, for uh, for Batman and Robin. Uh, usually, have to ask straight out the gate, though, uh, because the movie is obviously very divisive. What the guests actually think of it going in, because. You know, we need to kind of know what angle <laughs> you're approaching this thing from. Yeah, and all, all angles are welcome. It's fine. If you love it, if you hate it, it's all good. So I know that it, it enjoys a certain reputation. Um, and I have uh, seen it before, obviously. And I uh, had occasion to uh, brush up and see it again. And I want to say that uh, I liked it better this time. Hey. Ah. But not all, uh, not all parts of it. Yeah. Like it reaches a certain minute and then not quite as much mm. but i'm gonna go with yeah i liked it okay it's all right good stuff. I, okay. I think that's the sensible answer like it's it's fun you've had a good time but it's not it's not perfect it's not yeah great. i know <laughs> what you're saying too perfect. when you reach a certain minute too, I, I find that when you try to watch it all in one go it starts off like hey this is fun and then like about like minute 50 or so you're like Oh, so it's still going. <laughs> I didn't actually watch it in one go. I watched it in two goes, oh. and it was beyond minute fifty. So I must have liked it longer. Oh, nice! You guys nice. liked it. Uh, you made it longer, but you're still sort of proving Niall's uh, point there. I think. <laughs> yeah. You, know, you couldn't do it all yeah. in one go. You're like, ah. No, I could not. That's no. true. Oh, but uh, but today we're here to specifically talk about minute 118, which begins with a horrifying reunion, <gasps> and ends a minute later with a wondrous reunion. Uh, so yeah, it's quite nicely bookended this minute, weirdly enough. Um, we go from one surprise visitor to another. Yeah, that is the, really? uh, the, the, the This is a scene we really have to delve into because, like, <sighs> even when I was a ten year old boy watching this in the cinema, I was just like, what? <laughs> What? what? What is happening here? Yeah, I think we're all going to be on the same page with this. So, um, Ivy's been sitting there. You know, she's chilling, doing her, uh, he loves me, he, lo- he loves she's me not. chilling. Yeah. I think it's about to get a lot more chilly in that room. Because, uh. surprise, I am your new cellmate. And it turns out Mr. Freeze has been put in the cell with her. And now they are cellmates. Which is, considering their history together... Probably not a good idea for on for Poison Ivy. I don't even know where to begin with the questions about everything that's happening here, quite frankly. Well, that's the thing. No matter what angle you look at this from, it's wrong. Yeah. Because, it, you know, <laughs> not only would the legal system not put a duo together who were in cahoots prior. Yeah. Who broke out of this very asylum together. In together. The but I'm also pretty sure, if you look at it from a different angle, it would be against the law to put them together, knowing how much he now hates her, mm. and is almost definitely going to murder her. Yes. Yeah. Which he even what, essentially sa- he says he's going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's either not murder her, then like, was he like, is he just going to stay there knocking the crap out of her all the time? Like, will he draw long draw this out? I guess. We don't know how torturous this guy is going to get. Like, this is. It's a very dark note to end on, actually. Uh, isn't this the exact sort of thing that Bruce Wayne should be cracking down on? This kind of Victorian-era treatment of prisoners. Yeah, yeah. Mm. 
He hasn't cracked down yet. I mean, we always have Arkham Asylum, and he has. He's done diddly. Yeah. yeah. He's done diddly about it, and um, I, I'm wondering if this is just part of the law enforcement plan to put people who murder each other in with each other. <laughs> yeah. That could also work. It's very efficient well, that way. So they're already having budget cuts. They have to have a cellmate uh, sort of thing going on. There's <laughs> so many people in Arkham these days. Oh, see, I don't buy the cellmate. He's just saying that as a joke. I think the, the guards have just gone, put them together, it'll be funny. Yeah. yeah. And they're watching, uh, which is like, yeah, that's horrible. <laughs> it is horrible. Dark. I should ask, should ask Chrissy because you're from the uh, you have a psychological background. That's your that's your area of expertise. What <laughs> I do and I am yeah. yes. What do you approve of anything about Arkham Asylum? <laughs> the architecture. I think the architecture is just fabulous. It, it's lovely, but for uh, for a mental health hospital. <laughs> No, 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 no. I'm going to go with no on that. Probably a pretty safe bet. No. Uh, lighting bad. Uh, humidity bad. Yeah. No, not so good. Yeah. But I do like the architecture. Pretty cool. Mm. Uh, so another point to bring up is that Mr. Freeze is in his suit, which is um, how he broke out the last time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Was that he had a little, little maneuver of freezing the pipes. And they just broke. <laughs> like the I, whole wall broke down. What is to stop him from doing it again? No, I'm going to play devil's advocate with this. Right, right. I think, you know, last time he he couldn't survive without the suit unless he was in that beam, right? Mm. That's not practical. That's not cost effective. So they probably have, like, neutered the suit. They've taken away a bunch of its powers. But it's now acting as, like, a kind of, um, like, an iron lung. Yeah, it keeps him alive, and that's fine. Mm. I don't know, cause like huh. I don't trust the, the the people of Arkham seem very incompetent. Like <laughs> I don't think they would know how to neuter. Like they could try, and he'd be like, "Sure, up, yeah, that's it. It's totally powerless now." <laughs> oh, you've removed all of my abilities. No. <laughs> wow, I'm I, I your accents are pretty good accents. I can't really I can't really um. That's fair. We've, we've been at it for 118 minutes. That's true. Point. You sure have. You sure have. So I like the idea of a neutered suit, mm. though, um, that it's just a, like an iron lung and, and um, so forth. But you're right. They, it, you're also right to say, like, they, they certainly have not thought this through. Yeah. Well, it's, they haven't thought uh, a goddamn thing through in this place. They, they, <laughs> we've been through it before, but Arkham, everything about it's a disaster. What's going on? How and it keeps implying in lots of these that Bruce is involved, mm, mm. more so in the comics, but he is involved in it. So how? Why? What's happening? Yeah, it is. It's, it's not a, helping anybody. I guess maybe also because maybe Arkham has budget problems. They did have that one. They had the one room that had the ice beam. I guess. So then they there's a big hole in the wall. That one. I guess maybe they're like. We're not going to build another ice beam. <laughs> so. Yeah, plus they've got their ice cream in there now. <laughs> you know. Makes sense. Yeah. Sure. During a storm, though, it blows away because of the big hole in the wall. Like, damn, you freeze. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I would be devastated if I lost ice cream. Uh, I live for ice cream. But um, another point, though, would be to, uh, we, we've as we've gone on throughout the movies, we've always pointed out when uh, noted hack Christopher Nolan swiped something from one of the other movies even though like oh his his trilogy was so so daring and original it's gonna be really weird when we get to the Nolan movies and we have to sing the guy's praises all the time because he's actually hey, very good well we're being tongue-in-cheek we do like him really and the like, oh, noted genius is Christopher <laughs> Nolan uh, but this scene also reminds me of something very famous scene in the Dark Knight when the Joker is getting interrogated and, you know, he's talking to Gordon in a dark room. And then Gordon's just like, all right, well, he goes, I'm going to go out and get some coffee. And the Joker's like, ah, oh, the old good cop, bad cop routine. <laughs> and then, you know, Gordon steps out, the light comes on, and Batman's been behind the Joker the whole time. And it's and the, when you watch it and, like, just normally the Dark Knight, even back in 2008, I was like, Batman was there the whole time. <laughs> like... The Joker never noticed because the Joker was in the room by himself for a long time yeah. before Gordon came in. So it was Batman just hovering, just like trying not to breathe too loudly and like hoping the Joker didn't turn around and see the the, the big looming dude standing right behind him. <laughs> He's mysterious. He's in the shadows. But the same scenario is here. Like Mr. Freeze didn't just come in through the door. He's been standing in the corner. That's a really good point. I I I. I didn't quite put that together. You're right. He's been standing there, and she, but she, to be fair, she's really, really distracted by a flower somehow. <laughs> yeah. 
she really seems out of it, actually, Ivy. She seems like she's mm-hmm. gone off the deep end. She doesn't look like she's... She was so, you know, regal and sort of dignified throughout the rest of the movie. Then one of her own plants at her for some reason. <laughs> And now yeah, it's for some reason. Like now, because the fact that she doesn't even like, I don't know if they want to allow her a comb, or what the deal is. But she looks like she has gone full on, like, like completely insane. Like you know, a bit. I don't want to be like a you know, cause I'm talking to someone who works in the mental health field. Well, two <laughs> people who work in the mental health field. I don't want to be like. But she looks like cuckoo bananas, basically. Like I'll allow it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I don't know if that's supposed to be the indicator. Like, yeah, something's happening where she's she's properly gone now, and you know maybe that caused you know Freeze was like I've been standing here for ages and she's not she's not noticing <laughs> she's me. She's not getting it. I, well, why do you think they 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 gave her a flower to make her look crazy? Well, it's, it's, like why 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 not just have her make look crazy with something else doing something else? Yeah, she also has the weird like a, almost like a like a crown of thorns going on there in her hair. She has like little she? leaves going on through her hair as well. Huh. And with Ivy, you can't tell like is it she's part plant? Well, she is because her uh, skin is chlorophyll and all this business. Mm-hmm. She says <laughs> it makes no sense. <laughs> but so we don't. We were talking about this last minute. Like, did she grow the flower herself or did she find the flower? Oh. And now she eats it to like regain, like to gain its strength, or hmm. did it come from her? Because she's got leaves in her hair, and she when she erupted out of the ground, she also had leaves in her hair and stuff. It, uh, is it coming out of her? Like what is? Oh, maybe, like, maybe it came out of her head, and she's like, yeah, yeah, hmm. yeah. See, that does actually tie in. I didn't bring this up last minute, uh, but my, my question here was gonna be, yeah, kind of similar to what you've asked, like how. And why has she ended up like this? Mm. Um, the only thing I could think of, if I'm really stretching, was, well, now she's completely removed from her plants. Mm. Like, maybe oh, they keep her okay. grounded. Yeah. So to speak. She mm. could be up in a really high tower or something as well, like away from nature and stuff. Well, we saw how high up uh, this place goes when mm. we were here earlier. So, yeah. 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 Yeah, could be. Yeah. I was... I- I was reminded by, and I don't. I'm sure this is not what they meant, but I was reminded by, uh, um, reminded of Ophelia, mm. when Hamlet kind of goes nuts mm. on her, yeah. and uh, she's she's basically pining, and she they were boyfriend and girlfriend, and now he has lost his mind completely, and he yells at her, and she kind of goes crazy, and she has this long monologue or whatever, and it it is sort of in a sudden and abrupt sort of thing and then she drowns herself mm. so now i i know for sure that um you know i can't drown herself but um from from the point of view of classic something has gone wrong and relationships are not what they should be i was i was definitely reminded of that and and um Ophelia talks a lot about plants in there. It's all Shakespearean. And again, I'm sure this is just me and my take. I have no reason to think yeah. that it has any bearing on anything. But that's what I was reminded mm. of. Like, we had a normal person went through something of a, of, a, of a shift here, talking about the plants and the herbs and so forth. And now here we have Ivy. Yeah. I think yeah. you're onto something. And it's kind of hard for us to confirm, though, because uh, as we've brought up in the, in the commentary track, uh, Joel Schumacher decided to just leave. Yeah, yeah, he's gone. He just stops <laughs> doing the. <laughs> he opted out a couple of minutes ago. He's like, see ya. <laughs> like, so the, we don't know what his thoughts are. <laughs> uh, Astonishing, right? It would be nice to tie in though, because we did we talked a bit in um, season two during Batman Returns that the 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 character the rendition of the Penguin by Danny DeVito apparently was very reference. Uh, it was very influenced by Henry V. You would talk about really, yeah. You talk about like I think it's Henry V. That he's like the way kind of very deformed, power hungry guy. Oh, stuff. sure, sure, sure. Yeah, no, way. isn't that? Wait, hang on. Am I mixing them? I thought it was Richard the Third. Um, I can't remember if it was Henry V or Richard the Third. Richard the uh, Third's the one. That's the one Ian McKellen did. I remember. I remember distinctly. Ian McKellen did a version of Richard III because I remember always seeing the video cover of him with a cigarette sticking out of his mouth and stuff. Yeah. I think he was like a Nazi off. Like it was one of those ones where they updated it to he was like uh, a Nazi guy. Because Richard's uh, the one who's like 
they always make him out to be a bit. Uh, he's got like a hunchback, and he he has a lizard. Oh, sure, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he like but kills sure. his family. <laughs> yeah, we broke. We brought in our favorite uh, self-proclaimed bard, Kiri Callaghan. She's a big mm. Shakespeare buff. She was talking doing, talking at length about the Richard, but it was several years ago, so I couldn't remember. Okay, was. well, I'm I'm going to take back what I said. Maybe this is exactly what they had in mind. Yeah, <laughs> that Ivy is now going Ophelia like. Yeah, and she would drown herself if she could, but she yeah. can't. She can now hmm. because now a man of ice is here. He can freeze and then let <laughs> yes. it melt. And there you go. Because it doesn't take much water go. to drown. Yeah. But I should actually should bring up now, um, while we have the last Ivy minute, uh, something I meant to bring up a long time ago, <laughs> way back at the start of the movie, people might recall uh, when you know Batman did the slide down the big uh, Brachiosaurus. Oh, and we're I talking about that. like. You know, like, oh, it's a Flintstones thing. And I was talking about, like, well, there is, there's an episode of the 60s TV show where the guy who played Alan Reed, the man who played Fred Flintstone, features in an episode. And that episode uh, is called Dis- Penguin's Disastrous End. Uh, and it has the penguin, obviously, and a character called Marsha, Queen of Diamonds. And I was like, we'll talk about Marsha, Queen of Diamonds later on in the movie because Poison Ivy. And then I kind of put that aside like near enough forgot about her <laughs> until uh philip mathaz on twitter was like have you guys talked about marsha queen of diamonds yet you really should and i was like oh christ yeah that's right we meant to i meant to get back to that <laughs> if anything because... it's more perfect though because you bring it up at the beginning and now you you solve it all at the end well it's actually it is very appropriate because and i think it was near enough the last week of batman forever after we had you know talked to death about the box and i was like oh i was watching an episode of the 60s tv show featuring zaza gabor as a character Fabulous. called uh, Minerva, and her whole scheme was that she had come up with a brain-sucking device that you know she'd coax millionaires into through the promise of a spa, which is something that Poison Ivy actually does in the cartoon as well. Mm. And um, when she does that, she like is able to literally mine their head for information, much like the box. And I was like, oh, it's weird, like, you know, the last the, the last week of recording or whatever. <laughs> I was like, oh, it seems as if they might have swiped the box. From various things, but also this episode of the 60s TV show, Zaza Gabor was originally down to play the character and announced in the press as playing Marsha, Queen of Diamonds. Uh, but then she was replaced by Carolyn Jones. Um, I don't know if you guys know who Carolyn Jones is, but... You, I have no idea. She was the original Morticia Adams. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, back in the Adams Family TV show. Uh, Super with, fun. Yeah, yeah. With also John Aston, who would go on to play the Riddler. In, uh, sure. Uh, who also was in Return of the Killer Tomatoes with uh, George Clooney. <laughs> so everything's connected, I guess. But, hey. Uh, but there's a, ma- yeah, looking at the episodes, Marsha Queen, Marsha Queen of Diamonds features in a bunch of episodes, like maybe five in total. And they're like looking at them like she definitely had a massive influence on the portrayal of Poison Ivy in this. Uh, her opening scene, her whole thing is basically that she makes people fall in love with her. And she's obsessed with diamonds. And the opening scene is her going into like a, you know, a jeweler's with Chief O'Hara, who's completely smitten by her. And it's just like make, make, making the guy hand over all the the diamonds to Marsha because he, he's in love with her and all this stuff. Very reminiscent of the scene where Ivy, you know, love dusts like a very Chief O'Hara looking Commissioner Gordon because he's in the uniform and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you find out then she has literally kind of Cupid bow, bow and arrow scenario going on. Her whole motif when she's outside is kind of like this Middle Eastern vibe. Like she's got a little harem around her and stuff. And it's a bit like, oh yeah, Ivy always has this Middle Eastern music playing and stuff. Like we're saying it's got snake charmer music. And it could also be like, well, she's kind of part snake from her origin and she's also a charmer. So maybe that's what they're mm-hmm. going for. But uh, it could also be a little nod to Marsha. The end of that episode... It turns out she actually has O'Hara, Commissioner Gordon, ends up getting, you know, falling in love with her as well. And she keeps them all in cages under her hideout, like little bird cages, but they're all multicolored and stuff. Uh, and the end of it, then she tries to do it to Batman, but he uses every ounce of his willpower <laughs> and manages, of manages to stave off falling in love. But who does fall in love with her and turns violently jealous it was Robin. I'm me Robin, as well. Sure. Yeah. And so <laughs> at the end of uh, the, the her first, you know, what the, the the part one of her two-parter that introduces her, Barry, Batman has to get married to her, basically, because she's looking to get 
the giant diamond that's in the back computer. And if she's Batman's wife, that means she has legal claim over it. <laughs> Wait, so it's a legal situation? Yeah. Oh. It's a legal Whoa, formality to get access to the, the bat computer giant diamond. Like, ah, <laughs> so. but I have had you sign a prenup. Well, like, even worse <laughs> than that is that Batman's in the middle of doing it. The, the cliffhanger is like, will the Cape Crusaders say I do? <laughs> and then Aunt Harriet and Alfred arrive in. Aunt Harriet pretends to be Batman's wife. And I was like, well, he's already married to this well, lady. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And then, uh, so but eventually, though, they go off. Robin's cured, and they eventually defeat Marsha. She then shows up again in a three-parter, uh, which is Penguin. Penguin is a girl's best friend. Uh, Penguin sets a trend, and Penguin's disastrous end, which is a whole ridiculous story about the Penguin is making a movie, and he wants Batman to star in it. But it's a, it's a like, cover so he can steal gold bars. <laughs> and the, the, even the way that they resolve it, too, was like one of his henchmen, Batman hears one of the henchmen say, like, oh, the penguins really got it in the soup. And he tells Robin, like, but, you know, that's the clue, chum. What kind of, <laughs> like, you know, th- what, 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 what is soup? And Robin's like, chowder, bisque, stew, bullion. Bullion! Gold bullion! bullion. That's what he's going to steal. Oh, Uh, my God. I always love the way they figure these things out. They're so (laughs) stupid. But the Marsha's teamed up with the Penguin in those episodes, and she's doing... It's kind of like an Ivy freeze scenario. She's very, very sexualized in it. Like, she's basically strutting around buck naked at one point, and it's all 60s, like, ooh, lewd kind of behavior kind of thing. But at one point, she... In order to distract the guards of the gold... Uh, she has her Aunt Hildy, who comes up with all the... She, Aunt Hildy is a witch, basically. <laughs> it's kind of like Bewitched. Like, she has an, a, a, a cranky aunt who also... Of course, Nicole Kidman would go on to star in a remake of Bewitched. So, blah, 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 everything's connected. Um, and the, so, in order to distract the guards, Aunt Hildy starts playing Snake Charmer music. And out of this basket appears Marcia, very like... When they did the uh, blonde Venus, you know, Ivy in the pink gorilla outfit. That's what I was thinking as you were describing it, yeah. Yeah. And then as she gets out, she opens up a compact and then starts chucking oh the dust gosh. of it into the guards' faces in order to make them fall in love. And then when it's not quite working, wow. she just blows it, a la Poison Ivy blowing out of the compact. In And so yeah. that, that compact, like we said, that was a direct reference to comics as well. And it's in the shape of a comic, you know, the, the way it was in the old comic. But I would guarantee... They took it from Marsha Queen of Diamonds blowing love dust in people's face in that particular episode. And, uh, yeah, eventually at the end, though, that's the last real Ivy connection. But at the end, her and the penguin in a a tank. They run over Chief O'Hara. You think he's dead for a second. And he's not. He's perfectly fine. Nobody in that show can die, right? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) It was was weird in the first episode when they mentioned the murder of the, the Waynes. Because they never address it any other time in the show. But like in the opening episode, they're like, yes, the horrific murder of my parents. And you're like, holy crap, I didn't think that they ever they ever addressed the fact. Yeah, that's that- too dark for that program. As if they would well, get it out of the way once and then never mention it again. So, so they mention it. So, of course, I've seen all those those episodes a million, billion, billion times. But um, they only mention it once in the episodes? I think as far as I've ever seen, the Wayne's murders is only ever addressed like one time in the first episode. As if they were like, we huh. just need to get the formality. <laughs> it, it the shut way. the fans up. Like, it's, like, it's, yeah. a, it's too dark to keep going. Like, oh yeah, his parents are because no one ever dies in those, <laughs> in those right. shows. So, uh, right, that's right. Yeah, but well, that that certainly was a deep dive. That was, I mean, I remember those. I I couldn't have told you the name of the person, but I certainly remember him almost getting married. Then and oh no, he doesn't get married. And, <laughs> yeah, you know, thank goodness. And thank she's, goodness. She says she says the word darling. She is very vampy. She's like a real like, oh, he's come here and uh, worship Zha Zha me. Or would be. Yeah. yeah. Please yeah. say it's like darling. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So come here and worship me, darling. Like it's she's really, really overselling. So Uma Thurman, Mae West, Tula Bankhead, by way of Marsha, Queen of Diamonds. So, uh, but yeah. So now we are in the final minute of Poison Ivy. There is one of the major influences for. Just don't tell you, know, the last week of the recording was be like, oh, there's nothing to talk about. There's plenty still to talk about. So. Hell yeah. Oh, I'm impressed with that. Oh my God, I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah. But um, one thing I'm actually, uh, must reinstate how impressed I am, actually. Because it's the last time we see Mr. Freeze. And just seeing the makeup again. And just looking mm-hmm. at the suit in this lighting. 
I was like, that was a really good job they did with him. Oh, like, especially the- when he emerges at the beginning of the minute. Mm. That looks mm-hmm. cool, so yeah. to speak. Cool. <laughs> I, I was wondering if maybe maybe you know the answer uh, to this. I certainly don't. So he looks a lot like Rhino. That suit looks a lot like Rhino in Spider-Man. Uh, Spider-Man, which is it? Two? No Way Home? Not No Way Home. And Electro 2. Oh, yeah. The Amazing uh, Spider-Man. The Amazing yeah, Spider-Man. Yeah. And, and Electro. So um, I was wondering if there were if you knew something about the way the producers thought about this or the, the costume... Um, <laughs> it'd be weird designers they, thought about this it'd be weird if they went in mind like oh we swiped two looks from uh, <laughs> Batman and Robin the most reviled comic book movie of all time and then made Amazing <laughs> Spider-Man 2 which is like one of the most reviled comic book movies of all time oh. right <laughs> Well, okay, but but once I saw it, or it was my son actually who pointed it out to me. He's like, "Oh, okay, that's like the rhino suit." I, I couldn't unsee it. Yeah, that, that is uh, true. I, I hadn't noticed, but yeah, yeah, he's actually spot on. <laughs> so. Absolutely. Oh my god, I see fresh angles on these things. We need we need fresh eyes. <laughs> yeah. We'll also say too, the critical reception of Amazing Spider-Man Two is way too harsh. It's actually not that bad, but yeah, um, I didn't understand the the hatred. It's actually not that bad. It's yeah. fine. It's fine. It's better than than a lot of movies. Actually, one of my favorite Spider-Man lines is at the very end of that when he's like, when the Rhino is out threatening the people, and he's like, "Oh, come on, Spider-Man, come down, and stop me!" And like Spider-Man's just calling through the loudspeaker, like, "You want me to go down there so you can kill me?" And he's like, "That's right. Okay, I'll be right down." Like it's just <laughs> the kind of casual way he does is like. That's a good, that was funny. That's, that's a good Spider-Man line. But that's uh, great. Yeah. Oh, Freeze here has a, a line I really love as well. Uh, it's that when he says, "Prepare for a bitter harvest." I thought that was that was cool. That was mm. really really good. They've been saving this one. He's been like, I, yeah. I, had, I thought I exhausted all my puns, but no, I got a couple left in the bank. But the the draft, as usual, has a very bizarre bit of dialogue here. Mm. Uh, to me, I think this is weird anyway, because he says after that, um, you know, after after he's emerged and she's shocked to see him in the suit specifically, uh, he addresses the fact he's in the suit by saying, it's amazing what you can buy around here for a few dozen diamonds. Ah. And I'm like, what does he oh. mean by that? Did, did br- he bribe the guards, I guess? That's well, what I'm thinking. Did he buy them with diamonds to have his suit? No. That's even more dark. But that's even like, well, again, Arkham, horribly run. <laughs> yeah, so it should not have, it should not be part of Wayne Industries or, or you know, patronized by, by Bruce Wayne. It should have nothing to do with Bruce Wayne if it's this awful. I actually think that would be a better story as well. Like Bruce is trying to set up, you know, a proper, modern, helpful mental health hospital. Uh, but this mm-hmm. is the one ran by the corrupt government of gotham mm. and that could be the like a uh, a point of conflict yeah it could be like well want to set up a new place but markham does look really cool though. <laughs> <laughs> so you said that that was in the script the original script but he doesn't re- actually say it because i didn't recognize the line the bitter harvest line i don't remember that from the minute yeah. oh that's it that, that is in the minute the that's bitter the harvest well, line sure is, it is in. in the minute i just forget it <laughs> the the diamond bit is not that's from the draft Got that it. part yeah Got it. Um, it's and, uh, what would have been better if it had been in? Uh, I don't know. I think that makes it even more messed up. Mm. <laughs> because he's essentially okay. saying, I've bribed the guards to give me my suit and let me in here to beat you to a pulp. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh. Uh. Well, yeah. Um, also, too, is like, I'm just wondering now, like, Mr. Freeze promising diamonds, like, it's not as if they let him bring them in with him. So I guess it would have to be like, I've got diamonds hidden i can get you them i promise (laughs) you might have had to have been like i've got like yeah them saved somewhere if you go to these coordinates but then even you did who would trust the guards to be like if you go there (laughs) unless it was like if you go i'll give you one storage room of diamonds i've got but i've got other ones if you help me out (laughs) but yeah there's a lot of like that that it's probably even though there's so many questions with this minute that only ad- that only introduces more questions than if you if you say like yeah. oh you bribed them with diamonds somehow. Yeah, I agree. But in the draft, you do get a, a line from Ivy in response, which I actually thought was pretty fun. Uh, she responds by repeating herself from earlier in the movie because she goes, "Not good." <laughs> I 
it's like, oh, that because we made fun of how bad that delivery was. But if it came back again, it would be kind of fun. Yeah, so where does she say not good? Uh, okay. When they're breaking out, Bane tries to break down the wall, of, oh, and she goes, okay. "Reinforced steel, not good, not good." <laughs> Got it. It's, Got it. So I don't, yeah. I don't know. If bringing that back would help. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a fan of its reappearance. I'm like, eh, best leave it. It, it like, would change the tone of the scene into more silly. Yeah, yeah. But is it almost too dark this moment though to end on this like uh, lighthearted thing where like Mister Freeze is going to kill Poison Ivy? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, so maybe maybe it's obvious and I don't know well, who is she why is she doing that to the petals you know she loves me she loves me not he loves me he loves me not that is yeah. who's literally he? what I was asking last minute which you wouldn't even have known oh, that's that's crazy that because I had the same question I don't get it is it is she doing it for Mr. Freeze I think I'm getting the vibe from her facial expressions in this that it is about him because she was enamored with Mr. Freeze. And when he first shows up, you look at her face, she seems almost briefly happy. And then as he looms closer, she starts realizing, like, oh, oh, crap. <laughs> like, he knows oh. that I was lying about, like, his wife, Batman killing his wife. Well, and- plus he answers the uh, the game, so to speak. Because when she's like, you know, he loves me, he finishes the line off with, not. Mm. Not. Uh, Got it right. He's yeah. saying, right. Okay. I do not. But yeah, I do get the vibe. She's like, oh, we can escape together. And then she's realizing like, oh, he must know that. I, and he, he seems to be pretty pissed off at me. <laughs> so he, he's obviously the, 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 the game's rumbled, basically. Um, never find out what happened to Bane. We don't know if he'd he die in that mountainside <laughs> or is he in Arkham too? Oh, good point. But he good is point. he on, like, on, on those, there's a third bunk in the room <laughs> where mm-hmm. Bane's there. No, I reckon he's moved into Wayne Manor and he lives with Bruce now. He's, he's turned over a <laughs> no. new leaf. No. <laughs> there was a point in the comics where there was a weird guy who lived in I think he was like a hunchback guy who lived in the Batcave called Harold and he helped to like build stuff okay. I wouldn't be surprised I could imagine them like yeah Bane's Bane's that guy now I'm like why not <laughs> it's like well, the, the Joel Schumacher way of working would be like yeah sure yeah, whatever <laughs> it's fine yeah. Yeah, not enough people in Wayne Manor <laughs> at this point in the franchise <laughs> it is an interesting point to bring up though like it doesn't address anything to do with Bane other than, oh, he shrank back to his old size. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He, don't, he, was, he was a convict from another continent. <laughs> would they ship him back? Or would he be like, we'll be convicted? We don't even know who he is. Well, it like, depends on extradition he... laws. But where, where was yeah. he from? Was it, it was somewhere was in, in South the... America? South, South America, yeah. So. And let the things well, he Batman, takes... and, Batman and the others don't really care. They run by him. Yeah. You know, don't bother to... He's in a pool of venom or whatnot, and he, they don't even bother yeah, they, they looking go. to see if he's okay. Yeah, they like, just leave him to die. Like, he could literally take off yeah. the mask. It'd be like at the end of... Um, spoilers for the end of Con Air. <laughs> when you think everything's all good, and then it just cuts to Steve Buscemi as like this escaped serial killer in a casino going like, oh, I'm feeling lucky tonight. Like, they could end this with like Bane in a casino on Gotham going like, hey, I'm here, buddy. Like... Because before he was even Bane, he was a serial killer. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Wow. Somehow, uh, considering he was like a uh, the smallest man to ever live physically. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also, too, we got an indication that uh, Mr. Freeze, of course, is a Game of Thrones fan. Uh, with yep. <laughs> with uh, has come at 1997. last. 1997. <laughs> like he was a uh, he was in the books. He was in the like. Oh, I'm a George R. R. Martin fan. <laughs> you could never adapt this into a series. It would never be good. Well, you know, it takes him that long to write the books. It, it, it probably was out around this goddamn time. The first I one. Was, I think the first one was 95. So yeah. there you go. Yeah. 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 And people are still waiting for whatever the next one is. What is it, like the I fifth people one? Just gave, Sixth yeah, one? I think people, I'm getting the vibe people have just stopped caring now. Because it's like three or four years since the show ended. It's like, yeah. Yeah. And, it, and as we've talked about, it's the, I think it's the fastest I have ever seen the public stop caring about something. Yeah. <laughs> it went from this is essential viewing to game of what? Yeah, game of who? And you see yeah. like these. Oh, you can buy the whole box set now. Like, who would want to buy that? <laughs> I was like, you would, you would have died for the show like three years ago. No, I don't care now. Though. I'm done. <laughs> no, now it's all Squid Game. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I also really, really love just the lighting on Ivy as the as he approaches. Like, I just think that's the the, the contrast of her purpley 
pink hair mm-hmm. yeah, and his yeah, yeah. the mm-hmm. blue glow and then the face she's making of like utter terror is like it's very dark and considering what it's insinuating <laughs> but it's uh it's beautifully done like it's a real it's a it's a class you know cla- class shot basically yeah it's wonderful uh, i love that despite the uh the dark connotations as you say effective though mm-hmm. definitely effective should also note too that uh, we've been saying like you know this, this movie does follow the formula set down by Batman and Robin or sorry Batman Forever, wherein is it's following the same structure, and uh, we noted like last week, of course you know the Batman Forever ended with the Riddler lying in the ruins of his you know big mechanical monstrosity he had created, uh, Mister Freeze lying in the ruins of the mechanical monstrosity he created with Batman looming over him, of course then. You had the infamous Edward, who is Batman? I'm Batman, scene that ended forever in Arkham. And so now they've done the same thing with a demented, uh, you know, black and white clad villain stuck in Arkham. Uh, It's just very much like, yep, it's a formula. So that's what we do. (laughs) I love it. Yeah. Should also know, too, uh, just because we've always talked very highly of the portrayal of Mr. Freeze in the animated series. Uh, just because uh, of the last we see of him here, uh, just like the, the end note of Mr. Freeze in that animated continuity. I thought it'd be just like, oh, let's mention it while, while we had the chance here. Where uh, we said that again last week, talking about the last time we saw Nora freeze his head because he's a disembodied head at that point in the, <laughs> in the comic continuity. Uh, went into the Arctic Ocean. Uh, and then we, you assume he would be dead. But of course, he doesn't age or ever die because he's frozen. Uh, and so in Batman Beyond, the episode Meltdown features the return of Mr. Freeze, where the kind of arch villain of that whole show was this guy, Derek Powers, who was like a radioactive industrialist. Like he was literally radioactive. What? Uh, he was a, a super villain called Blight. Like he would like touch things and they'd melt because he was literally radioactive. Ooh. He was like, he, you could see his skeleton and he glowed and stuff. Uh, and so he's looking to get this cured because he keeps putting on like fake skin that just breaks off and stuff. Uh, and like this lady says to him, like you know, she's a renowned scientist. She's like, well, if you could fu- if you could clone your body with your base level DNA, we could put your consciousness into that body, but we'd need to test it on someone who's in a similar position to you. And luckily, we have the fre- the the head of Mr. Freeze right here. Oh, well, convenient. Okay. Yeah, and so yep. Freeze is like it's that animated show, very very grim. So they come in and talk to him and he's just like every day, not a day passes where I don't think of death. Like I'm just dying to I'm dying to die basically. Like please just let me die. And um they're like no, no, we're going to put you in the clone body that will restore you back to normal. And he literally goes <laughs> <laughs> and like does not interest it. <laughs> but they do it anyway. And it actually works. And Mr. Freeze is going around like Victor Freeze again. Perfectly normal. And he's even like he gets attacked by people who like lives he ruined back in the day. And he's his compassions come back. He's like, I'm so so sorry, but I did you. He's like back to being a human being. Bruce Wayne, old man at this point, is like, Don't trust him. Don't believe it. Huh. <laughs> and Terry McGinnis, the Batman at that point, is like, No, he seems like a good guy and stuff. Mm. Of course then <laughs> Everything starts going wrong. Uh, it, it turns out his body starts reverting back to like his, you know, li- living frozen thing. So he starts sweating profusely, even when it's snowing outside because he's so hot. Uh, and then this sounds Derek too Powers, realistic. It would stress me out. <laughs> but then Derek Powers and the, the scientists, they're like, "Well, we can just biopsy his organs and try again." And so they, oh, they yeah, just try yeah, to... we can just biopsy his organs. You know, casual yeah. everyday activity. And then, so they try to kill him. He busts out and runs away. And then he reappears for revenge because, as Bruce notes, like the only thing Mr. Freeze understands is revenge. Because <laughs> uh, it's sole motivation throughout the anime series. And, stuff. and it's a dish best served cold. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Uh, so he comes back in a cool new suit. Uh, and this, uh, I'll post, post a picture of him in the listener's cave. But it's like a weird design. It actually is based on a comic book that Paul Dini wrote in between the things. I'll, that's a whole bit. I'll explain it in that post. Uh, and so he goes around, he freezes Derek Powers, but because he's blight, he's radioactive, the ice ends up just melting. He gets out. Uh, he kills that scientist lady. He's just like, yep, screw you. She has a pretty horrific death. We just hear her scream echoing like after he's done it and stuff. And his whole plan is like, All right, Mr. Freeze, I'm going to blow up 
this whole compound and destroy a chunk of the city because I'm just pissed. <laughs> uh, and so Batman steps in to stop him. Uh, him and him, Blight and Mr. Freeze all have a bit of a scuffle. Blight gets chucked out of the way, but Mr. Freeze is severely damaged and the whole compound starts collapsing on top of him. And then Batman's like, Freeze, you have to get out of here. And Freeze is just like, believe me, you're the only one left who cares. No. And he just lets the building fall on top of him. And that's just like, that's it. That was the death of Mr. Freeze in the animated continuity. He just, you, there's a chance he could still be alive, but it's like, they never got back to him. So, uh, But they could. It, yeah. <laughs> but they could. But it just says right. that, that forever melancholy note of Mr. Freeze where it's like, he just died. Like, Nora's not even, she's definitely dead. She's long gone. She'd remarried and everything. He's got nothing. So he just lets everything. It's like, it's for a kid's cartoon. You're like... Ooh, man, that's that is a rough, that's a rough Grim. life that guy had. Whereas at least this Ar- Arnie's Mister Freeze ends on a happy note for him. I guess. Yeah, a happy note of probably murdering a woman. Lovely. Yeah, yeah, delightful. And maybe reviving his wife someday. I guess. <laughs> but, but we do. Um, we cut to Wayne Manor after that, don't we? Yeah, yeah. And we see Meanwhile, stately Wayne Manor. We see Barbara asleep on the sofa in this massive house. Why is she sleeping on the sofa? There's probably 50 bedrooms. Then again, you know, I'll defend it somewhat. They've clearly had a bit of a a a celebration party for the victory because there's pizza on the table and whatnot. Uh so maybe she's had some drinks. I've fallen asleep <laughs> on the sofa many times. Uh, very recently in fact like last weekend um plus you know it's not just a celebration it's they're worried about alfred and they're all useless clowns Mm. who can't cook or clean for themselves yes right as we've established so they've ordered pizza it that you know they probably said uh bruce uh, are you gonna cook us uh, any dinner and he's like um how? <laughs> yeah. I know you guys like pizza because kids like pizza, right? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's, uh, I'm surprised there's no Taco Bell in there because that was the official tie-in sponsor, but they're like, yeah. we don't want to be associated with slob Bruce Wayne in his manner. <laughs> I'm surprised you gave him the benefit of the doubt of this, like, oh, it might have been a celebration party. I think they're just slobs. Like, I think it's both. It's both. You know, they, they've won. They get back. Sometimes you've had a busy day. You don't want to get home and cook, even if you can. I know he can't because he's an idiot. He's a child. <laughs> but, um, you know, you can't be bothered sometimes. You just order in. So, so I think it's a bit of both. <laughs> just imagine, though, like Barbara's in the middle of like, oh, so, like a mourning for her uncle. And then Dick yeah. just sticks on like the offspring. <laughs> he's like, come on, let's get this party going. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> goes down and opens like something like insanely expensive wine from the wine cellar <laughs> i have to say i've never thought of them drinking never th- even even with the, uh, maybe maybe that uh, bruce must drink he goes to all those parties well we he must drink. i think we brought this up oh god it must have been years ago it must have been season one actually where we talked about this i, I think we got the vibe that bruce is someone who probably doesn't drink but lets people think he does i think they mention oh. in the dark knight returns He's talking to Commissioner Gordon at one point, and who knows he's Batman at that point in the story. And he's like, yeah, all those parties where you were drinking ginger ale and pre- pretending it was champagne. <laughs> so I think it's like he oh. pretends to be like a drinker, but it's always like just fizzy water or whatever, you know? <laughs> like the, but that's, a, that's a Bruce the Wayne <laughs> who cares about his, his fitness, his physique, his, his alertness, his readiness. Yeah. Does this Bruce Wayne care about anything? Hmm. Well, we had, like, Michael Keaton, Bruce Wayne, remember, way back in 89, the very troubling minutes, mm. where Vicky Vale went for dinner and was plastered, and he was yeah. taking her up the stairs, and he was stone-cold sober, and it's like, it's not a good look. No, and not, <laughs> only was, not, a good look. not only was he sober and, and she was drunk, but if you remember, he he kind of physically restrains her, mm. and it's like, that's, oh, no, that's not that's not good. And like she says as well, like, you know, like, I'm so drunk, but, you, you know, you've been... But you don't seem drunk at all. And he's like, oh, one drink and I'm flying and stuff. It was, it was, well, we had a whole big thing of it back back then where it's like, oh, this is uh, not good, look good. And uh, particularly the modern day, it didn't look good back in 1989 either, no, quite frankly. But, no. but uh, it, on a lighter note, I mean, this Bruce, I don't think he, he cares too much. Do you think this Bruce eats pizza? Well, no. At the beginning of the movie, Alfred did shout out, like, I'll cancel the pizzas. But that could have been 
The pizzas indicates <laughs> plebe- Robin could be eating several pizzas, though. To be fair, when I was could- young, I could eat several pizzas. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. still physically could now, but I, I would, I would regret it. <laughs> mm. I don't know. I think maybe in in this kind of this sort of scenario, I I don't think I don't think this has been a party. I think he's just they're just generally in disheveled, panicked worry, and they don't, and it's just like I can't think about cooking. Just uh, yeah, I'll eat a pizza, or whatever. You know, it's just yeah. I don't know. This Bruce, I can't decide if he would eat pizza or not because on one hand. He doesn't seem to really care about his body. And I don't mean that like he looks bad or anything, because it's, it's George Clooney. You know, but he doesn't... Uh, <laughs> he's not really into, uh, like, a military kind of strict lifestyle, no, is he? No. Like some Bruce Waynes. He's not the fish oil guy. No. Yeah. But at the same time... I don't know. I'm trying to decide. Well, he's not that fun. Pizza actually is kind of fun, and and yeah. this Bruce Wayne is not that fun. He yeah. seems like someone who'll just eat some plain toast. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> but that's definitely not fun. So that that matches my image <laughs> of him. I was going to say, you know, a, a healthy salad. Oh, maybe, could, but... yeah, yeah, maybe a salad. But maybe that's too fun too. I don't know. I imagine that without <laughs> Alfred, he is in complete freefall. He might be like. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll ring for something. And he's like on the phone, like, yeah, can I get some? They'd be like, yeah, there's Pizza Hut. He's like, yeah, can I get some Vichy Soir? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sir, we serve pizza here. <laughs> he probably doesn't know what the common man eats, does he? He's, he's rich. He's posh. No. He'd be asking for like some very fancy like Japanese pizza on like black dough and stuff. <laughs> and they'll be like, sir, we're Pizza Hut. <laughs> like, you- yeah. We don't know. Yeah, we can have pepperoni or chicken, and that's about what you're going to get. <laughs> so. What have you got with a with a topping of truffle? Mm. <laughs> uh, mm, okay. It's like, sir, I don't know what a truffle is. Like, oh, don't you, don't you have a truffle pig? <laughs> no, we don't. Like, I have a truffle pig in my manor. You can borrow it if you want. <laughs> I think um, there should be a Bruce Wayne themed takeaway. <laughs> where it does all elaborate fancy dishes. Yeah, you could do, uh, I don't know. He seems like someone who would um, be served a beef wellington by uh, by Alfred. Mm. Alfred being English, being posh. Posh English people like a beef wellington. I remember there was a, co- a recent comic where they showed him at Bat Burger. Because in modern DC continuity, there is a Bat Burger restaurant. But he's not someone who would eat a burger, that that Bruce. That, no, he wouldn't. That's weird. Well, that's, you're right. But as they, they show him eating a burger in it, but he's eating it with a knife and fork. <laughs> oh, for goodness uh, sake. Uh, uh, that, okay. uh, you get in the conundrum then, it's like, yeah, Bruce, I guess he's a posh guy. Maybe he's putting on the airs of being a posh guy by eating it with a knife and fork in public, because he's in public. So- so just to review, we've we've established that he doesn't eat pizza, he doesn't drink champagne, he does drink ginger ale, possibly toast, <laughs> and healthy salads, yeah. maybe, maybe, and truffle oil. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. mean, it's it's not very wide range here. Yeah. Oh, we did see him eat vichyssoise back in Batman. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah the vichyssoise. Yeah. yeah, that's right. But not Taco Bell. Mm-mm. Yeah, no Taco Bell. And uh, well, thank, thank in, God. in Comic Continuity, he will eat a burger with a knife and fork. But uh, right. well, if you remember, right. Niall, it, it was only a few years ago that loads of our politicians were getting insulted in the press because they kept using a knife and fork for eating things. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, could, that, com- that issue could have been out around the same time. They might have uh-huh. well been riffing on like these idiots don't know how common people eat. <laughs> was it? Was it uh, David Cameron, our former prime minister? Was he eating like a hot dog with a knife and fork? Was that it? I keep trying to think of, was it Ed Miliband with that bacon sandwich? Oh, that's when he so. couldn't eat a bacon sandwich and it just went all over, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he basically <laughs> lost the election because he couldn't eat a bacon sandwich properly, yeah. And I'm not even joking. Wow, that's a, that's, well, that's a tough thing to repeat, you know, to know that that was your history and like, why didn't you win the electron, election? Yeah. Well, there's a bacon sandwich. I don't really want to go into it. You wouldn't it. believe the day the, after uh, he lost that election, he went he went on holiday to Ibiza, which I, was kind of, I got so much more respect for him where he's like, I lost... It. I'm out. Party <laughs> I'm just time. going on a rager to the I was like, oh, fair play, man. That's if you gotta go out, then go out like that. <laughs> you know what? The only time I will allow a burger with a knife and fork is, you know, like the the trend right now for those burgers that not only can you not fit them in your mouth, but you can't even mm-hmm. squash them into a size that'll fit in your mouth. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I, okay, if you're gonna cut it into pieces and then eat it with your hands, okay. <laughs> I think I I kind of took a little bit of offense to it because it's like they're indicating Bruce Wayne wouldn't know how to eat a burger. 
And that's why I like to think he was putting on the performance because like Bruce Wayne traveled the world. Yeah. Like I, he knows how to eat with chopsticks. He knows he knows the etiquette of everywhere he is. He's like he's Batman. That's kind of his thing. Yeah. So I think I'm choosing to believe it was him like I'm in a fine suit in this, you know, McDonald's basically is what it was. And he's like, I'm people see me. I, I want to make sure that they still think I'm, like, rich asshole Bruce Wayne. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> I'm eating my burger with a knife and fork. I don't even know if they could serve a knife and fork in a McDonald's. I think they'd be like, nothing here is necessary. It's all finger food. That's a like, good question. You can get a salad. Oh, that's true. But doesn't yeah, that come yeah. with the fork, like, a plastic fork in the packaging? I think so. Yeah. Mm. But, uh, anywho. Well, and there you go. Bruce should have got the salad like he likes, as we've established. Yeah, he should have gotten the salad. That's right. That's right. Yeah. But... There's a couple of things. You see, there's also Chinese takeout as well. There's like, that's the thing. Now you get into the question of, like, how long has this been? Because you saw them put in the cure. Presumably, it's been uh-huh. a while that Ivy's been convicted and put in uh-huh. Arkham Asylum, and Mr. Freeze has also been put but, in there, too. But a conviction surely would take months. Yeah, so I guess it's like a holding, unless they're just in holding or whatever. It seems to be nighttime when they get to Arkham, so that's at least a day. And then look at all this. Like, this ain't like the last couple of hours. This is like they've been down there for days. So there is, there's a short film to be made of the <laughs> what these yeah, guys were up to. Yeah, it was just a day. I thought it was kind of like the same day, but I guess you're right. I guess there's there's too much food. Mm. There's too much detritus on the floor. No, I'm yeah. with, I'm with so, okay. your original thought there, Chrissy. I, I, I think it's been like maybe two days is the way I always saw it. <laughs> okay. And I think there's just... Alfred coming down and Bruce like, Alfred, we've been separated for almost a day. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah. as a Frenchman. <gasps> well, you know, I, it's three people, uh, you know, three meals a day that they can't cook because they're useless idiots. So right. that, that'll build Good up point. quite quickly. Plus, they don't want to. You know, they can't cook. They can't clean. Plus, they don't want to. Yeah, they're going to live mm-hmm. on pizza forever and keep on a rocking. And they couldn't possibly take the garbage out. Oh, no, no, so, no. So, no. The thing is, I can, no. I can give it to, you know, Dick and Barb. You know, she's she's a university dropout. Like, she's a, she's of that, you know, a slovenly age. <laughs> Dick, teenage teenage boy. Well, you know. He's supposed to be. 40, yeah, 45-year-old yeah, yeah. man in reality, but... <laughs> I'm just ashamed of Bruce because <laughs> it's like he's, he's supposed to be 36 here, which is like he's, he still feels older than me, but that's because I'm now 34. I was gonna and I'm, like, say, I'm 36 in a couple of months. <laughs> <laughs> but I do feel he should be like, come on, clean up. You know, like I know we're all bereaved, but like keep the show going. <laughs> like don't just let. Speaking of a, a university dropout, what's the book she's reading? I've been trying to decipher. Yeah. I tried I've to zoom the... in and I couldn't quite see. I couldn't zoom in. I wasn't able to stop it right the the one place. And then I was thinking, why didn't they let us know what she was reading? It looks like something really boring <laughs> and something really old. It'd also be a good time for like a gag. Like a side yeah. gag. Yeah. 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 I would have appreciated. Yeah. And I would try to think of like one that'd be, well, she could be reading Emma by Jane Austen. Because that's what Clueless <laughs> was based on. So that that would that be a nice nod. Good. Yeah. But yep. That would have been there, good. There yeah. you go. Right there. That's much better than what we get. I'm going to try to try to find... Because it's just maybe just the quality of the copy I'm looking at. Maybe I'll try to find like a you know a very high definition version and see then if we can zoom well, in. Well, this to... is the Blu-ray copy, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but see if there's even more Blu-ray Ray copy. <laughs> Blu-ray. <Ray. laughs> that's 4K. I have I have no way of watching 4K. I'm 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 stuck in the past. You're hung up in some uh, media player from the the 2010s, man. <laughs> You're living in the past. It's true. Yeah. But the but in the midst of this whole just disaster zone, uh, we do get a, a familiar face shuffling into view <gasps> as, as Alfred. I was surprised that he wandered in in his robe. I mean, it, any normal person would have wandered in his robe to say, hey, I'm not dead. Uh, the treatment worked. Thanks so much. I love you all. Mm. Thanks for, you know, did you save me pizza? But but <laughs> I think it was probably hard for Alfred to wander around in his dressing gown. Mm. That's an excellent point. The Alfred we know, no matter how ill he was, would have gone and put that suit on. Yeah. Yeah. Shoes, socks, groomed himself, cleaned up a little it bit. It is proper. 
A little bit more of an entrance, too. He's like, I'm back, baby! <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't talk that much. <laughs> well, it was a great impression of Alfred. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, okay. It was a side effect of the cure. And then now he talks like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Now he talks that like that. That could have been an okay. excuse for changing the actor. Like, oh, I don't know, side effects, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> like, Polly Shore is now playing Alfred. Or something. Ooh, no. Like, no, no. What's up, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> like, Alfred, you seem a little different. <laughs> Terrible idea. <laughs> Sliding in with sunglasses on. And stuff. <laughs> That's the, the fifth movie we deserved. Mm. Oh. Well, someday. Maybe in the 89 comics they'll get around to it eventually. <laughs> oh. But that is, uh, that's pretty much the end of the, the minute here. Um, that's all the notes I've got for minutes 180. Every time I keep forgetting the 180. 118. Yes, you almost said 108. Uh, uh, does anyone else have anything else they want to specifically bring up about 118? Oh, noted out. That covered it for me. No? Uh, well, Christy, uh, because uh, Batman Robin so reviled a movie it is. Uh, we've uh, been asking the guests what the worst film they've ever seen is. Oh. Uh, worst film I ever saw was uh, Under the Rainbow with Carrie Fisher. Oh. Ah, should, yeah. should have been her, her comeback, you know. Uh, we had Indiana Jones and we had uh, Mark Hamill. Do- well, Mark Hamill didn't actually get too far, you know, Night the Lights Went Out in George and such, but mm. I thought and? Under the Rainbow was a terrible, terrible movie. Yeah. Terrible movie. That's the, the making of The Wizard of Oz, and it's like, I've, I've never mm-hmm. seen it, but it's like Chevy Chase, I think, as well, isn't it? Or Yeah, and it should have been a lot better, because I think Carrie Fisher can, can well, th- that that particular thing, she could not act her way out of a paper bag. It was Ooh. unfortunate. It was Ooh. hard to watch. Oh, hard man. To, I did stay for the whole thing. Oh, you saw but it the, in the, theaters. The, Oh yeah, I'm that old. Oh, oh, sure. oh yeah, I'm that old. Um, but the the thinking about um, how people don't know if they like this, you know, Batman and Robin, or they do know if they don't like it. <laughs> um, uh, the one that people didn't seem to like that I liked mm. was Starship Troopers. Oh, oh. I like Starship Troopers, and it's about the same. It's about the same time. Yeah, basically. Yeah. I think it was like ninety eight guys- or so. Yeah. Yeah, did you guys like that one? I absolutely love it. Yeah. Yeah, I quite enjoyed oh, Starship okay. Troopers. Yeah. I think yeah. It, it's um it's possibly the circles we move in though now. Like I know a lot of people who love it, but I think in the wider world, uh people I would speak to would either not even know what it is or not mm. care. Yeah. I think it's also too oh, cuz it's sad. it's um I think a lot of people missed the satire of it the first time around. I think they thought it was. I think so too. Like they, they like, thought it was dead serious satire. about the way it was. It's like it's the guy who made RoboCop. Like yeah, but if you don't know that, it, I mean, it co- it might it might come across as oh, it's like a weird sort of fascist movie. It's like yeah, it's making fun of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's making fun of that. Yeah. I, in fact, I don't even think I knew it was made by the guy who did RoboCop, and I still think it was a you know pretty good movie i like that movie i like that one but other people oh don't. now you need to watch robocop again with that knowledge and you'll see the connections you'll yeah. be like ah okay. this is really similar yeah i'm on it there are a lot of similarities like all the all the advertisements you see in robocop are very much like the um you know like the, the military propaganda you see in starship troopers oh. <laughs> mm, yeah do yeah. you want to know more <laughs> should also mention Thanks. as well that uh starship troopers does our dina meyer who would go on to play Barbara Gordon oh. in the TV show Birds of Prey uh, and actually adopted, wore the Alicia Silverstone Batgirl suit hey. in that That's show. That's amazing. Yeah, so everything is connected. Yeah. Everything is connected. Mm-hmm. And fortunately, you both know the connections. Yeah. So that's hey. but, but, uh, uh, Also to say, because it was the last minute of Ivy and Mr. Freeze, so see you, see you Uma, see you Arnie. Oh, <laughs> so, two yeah. of my oh, uh, heroes right there going... Off into the night. Mm, always have to say goodbye. So I remember when we got to the end of 89, that was the last minute of Jack Nicholson. It really felt like we'd been on a journey with the guy. So it was like, oh my God, he's gone now. <laughs> it's been so long since we saw him as well. But like, yeah, so I always have to give them a little tip of the hat as they as these actors go off into the night. Pour one out for them. Mm. Have a little drink yourself. We will. Head off into the dark, dark night. Uh, Christy, would you like to tell people where you can be found online or promote anything of your choosing? 
Well, let's see. Uh, there is Indiana Jones Minute, um, and um, people should go check that out if they haven't. Hell yeah. If you haven't, I mean, you're missing out. Don't listen to this nonsense. Go and listen to that. That's <laughs> that's one of the greatest of all time, so go do that. Yeah, they are kindred spirits this season, too, because they're going through their own much maligned <laughs> uh, fourth installment in a franchise. But... You know what? They are, but you can make the best of it. Yeah. It's all right. <laughs> you know what? I, can... I don't hate the movie. I quite like Crystal Skull. So I, okay. I meant to mes- message them at the time when... I think within the same week we had Mr. Freeze swinging on a vine <laughs> and Shia LaBeouf swinging with those monkeys. That in the is same the worst week. bit of the movie. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. yeah. But I wanted to go like, oh, there's real, it's proper synergy. Like we're both at the same kind of crap in the same week. And then I just forgot to message them oh. at the time. And as the weeks went by, it's like, I can't go six weeks ago. This happened. Yeah. <laughs> so. oh, that movie would be improved so much without monkeys swinging with Shia LaBeouf. Mm. But never mind. Swing with us, everybody, uh, across the Monday and Tuesday night sky. Swing right into Wednesday because we'll be back then with another episode. We'll be uh, here with Minute 119. So in the meantime, do speak to us on Facebook at the Bat Minute Listener's Cave, on Twitter at Bat Minute, Instagram, the Bat Minute, uh, all the usual Patreon, Public. Just look us up. Just do whatever. Chuck us some money. It's always helpful. <laughs> Uh, buy buy us a coffee. We have that coffee thing now. Was it dot, that website? It's called like coffee. Yeah, I always called it coffee. It might be coffee. I've while. never I've never promoted it ever. People can buy us a cup of coffee. Find us on there. Yeah. <laughs> what a great idea! Yeah. This is me and they John a, a a single cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah, we, like, we'll fight over it if you buy us one. Um, John's like, I'm gonna I'm ordering it now, and <laughs> I have to like, get the boss into town to share the coffee. <laughs> oh, well, buy us a coffee, and we'll see you again on Wednesday for more Bat Minute and Robin. Next time, reunited, and it feels so good. A manners manservant is seemingly on the mend as the saga of the McGregor syndrome finally draws to an end. The recovering codger is welcomed by the crusading commander and his lodger, but as there's babble about the battle and the virtues of trust which new accomplice will be quick to claim credit for kicking botanical butt it's more like boast girl next time kids same bat pod different bat minute we'll be be back back.